Welcome to another Design and Draft TV episode. I'm your host, Michael Marcano. Uh, I am an AutoCAD certified professional. I am also a CAD manager and a CAD instructor. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to pick up where we left off when we were learning about block creation. Um, we left off with geometric constraints. constraints. Today we're going to pick up with dimensional constraints and the block table. Um, a lot of people don't know how to use the block table, so that if you don't know how to use it or you've never used it before, this is going to be a good video for you to watch. Um, so first, let's just go through what is a dimensional constraint. It's exactly that. What we're doing, uh, it's exactly how it sounds, is we are constraining or we are locking an object to a set, either to a set length or to a set, um, to a set distance, right? So for example, if we had a line, well, we can constrain that line to be a specific length or a list of lengths, right? Um, and and they're, they're really, really very useful. Um, and the good thing, the great thing about these dimensional constraints is that they, they add custom properties into, um, into your block that you can then call on in your properties table. So let's go ahead and let's create a random one here um and then we'll add you know some different constraints and 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 we'll show how to use it so we're going to start with a rectangle and i am going to uh, draw a rectangle here on screen i'm going to um, specify the distance so you want to or the dimensions so if you want to if you're ever drawing a rectangle and you need to you know these set uh units for your rectangle you can just hit d on the keyboard for dimensions and hit enter and then it will tell you to specify the length so we're going to make our length 200 and we're going to specify our width to be 100 and we're just going to click on the screen and here is our rectangle all right and so now we're going to apply some of these constraints so um this first one here this is this is going to be your linear constraints your vertical and your your vertical and your horizontal okay the these constrain it along a specific axis so your horizontal constraint is going to constrain it along the x-axis along units along the x-axis okay it the reason that this is important is because this is not giving you for example the length of the line right when you put it at the end point okay um because initially that if if your line is completely horizontal okay like that and we apply this horizontal constraint you know one on the left one on the right and go up yes this is the length of this line but that is only because this line is completely horizontal okay um so it can seem like yes this is giving you that um that measurement but look what happens when we move this you know down like this right this is way longer than that initial nine that we do but notice that this did not change so even if we look here at our property tip you can see that the length of the line is now 485 units but this is still reading 277.09 units okay that is because what it has constrained the line to is two points on the x-axis okay so imagine if this was like your your typical uh graph right where this is zero what we have said is that this line is going to be constrained along whatever point this is on the x-axis okay that is that's that's what we're saying there okay so it's going to be always the same and despite what the length of the line is all right and it does the same thing vertically okay so I just wanted to make sure that I explained that because um, that that gets people sometimes so for this purposes we're not gonna um, we're not gonna use those I, I, I very rarely use those constraints um, I like to use aligned because I just get a lot more versatility from the aligned constraints because this one you're constraining to the actual object so for example if i do the same thing with the line like that and i do the aligned constraint like that 
Now what we have said is that this line is going to be constrained to this length. So if I do the same exercise I did before, notice that the line comes with me, right? That initial point doesn't stay where it was at. The line comes with me. And notice that the dimension matches the orientation of the line, okay? So you, I can't stretch this line because it is constrained to be this number of units. So I'll go ahead and delete that. And so now what we're going to do here is we're going to apply some constraints to this rectangle. So I'm going to go with the align constraint and I'm going to select first this top left and then the top right. And what you end up here is you end up with D1 is equal to 200. All right. So let's go ahead and apply one also to the bottom. Left, right. D2 is also equal to 200. Let's apply one to the left, top, bottom. D3 is equal to 100. And let's apply one to the right side. D4 is equal to 100. All right. So we have applied these now these constraints. And so what these blue arrows are showing you is that when that dimension change, which way will it expand by, right? Which way will it will it go um, if these units here were to change? Okay. So um, now what we're going to do is let's rename these. So we're going to change D1 to say that this is the top. And we can say that that uh, can remain equal to 200. D4, we're going to say right is equal to 100. D2, we can say bottom is equal to 200. And this one, we can say left is equal to 100. Okay. And so now we have that um, nice and renamed. Okay. And so now the next thing that we can do here is we can go ahead now and we can uh, use, let's add this block table. The reason we want to add this block table is because what if, if this was a part, right? Um, and this part came in different sizes. What we can do is we can create a block table to show those different variations. I know a lot of people like to use visibility states, um, but there's a good, there's a, there's a pro and con with each okay for example so the block table works for an object that is varying in size okay um so you know you have like for example this box is a 200 by 100 well let's say that there is a version of this box that is 400 by 200 well then a block table will, will in this sense work better than creating a visibility state because a visibility state you have to make copies right in order um to then navigate through those visibility states which makes your block heavier with this one you don't have to do that when you're using the block table so the block table is good for the same object that may have maybe varying in size as to where a visibility state is good for um different variations but where like the object may look completely different so for example if you're building a county map right well then what you can do is use a visibility state and where you move the hatch around to the different counties right things like that um so i hope that was kind of a good explanation and so the next thing we want to do here is let's go ahead and add this block table so we're going to click on block table and i'm going to want to apply it here to the geometric center just like that number of grips we're going to leave it at one and hit enter so now we get our block properties table. So what we're going to do here is we are going to first create a custom property um, or a custom parameter because what we want to do is we want to name our variations, right? So I'm going to create this custom property and I'm going to say that this is um, part sizes, right? So we'll say part underscore sizes. And then what we'll do is we'll say that it is a string and we'll say okay so here we have part sizes and so now what we want to do is we want to add all of our dimensional constraints 
So we're going to hit this first one, just function with the green plus sign. And here you can see our four constraints. And we're going to select, uh, you can hold shift and click the bottom one to select them all. So we can put them all in at the same time and say, okay. So we have part sizes, top, bottom, left, right. All right. And so let's start with our first one. So here we know that this is a 200 by 100. So we'll just say 200 um, by 100. Our next variation, what is our next variation going to be? So let's double it. Let's say 400 by 200. And our next variation, let's say, is 600 by 300. So we have three variations, right? Just like that. Okay. And so here, let's say what they are. So here we have top at 200. Bottom is going to be equal to 200. The left is going to be equal to 100. Right is going to be equal to 100. And so we can go down the list and do just that. So we'll say 400. And this one is 600. And this is going to be uh, 200. Whoops, I think I made a mistake here. This is supposed to be 400 as well. And this one's going to be 600 as well. And then on the left, we have this one's going to be 100, which means that this one's going to be 2. And this one's going to be 3. And the same thing on the right. So 200 and 300. And so now we have our varying part sizes. So now we can say, okay. And there we go. Now we have a box that our, our rectangle that is constrained. And we have different variations of the same rectangle. So let's test it. So we'll go to test block. And as you can see here, here's our rectangle. If we select it, notice that we have this nice uh, little drop down here in the middle. If we select it, we can now see the varying parts. So let's go. So, you know, our um, initially our block defaults to 200 by 100. But let's see what it does if we go to the next one. And notice that it stretches. Now it's a 400 by 200. And if we go here and we'll go to the next one stretches again so now this is a 600 by 300 right and these are the varying part sizes and here are our custom properties here to the left so you have your top is 600 bottom 600 left three right three and here is your part sizes all right pretty cool right so let's go ahead and close this so that is um your dimensional constraints and your block table um and, and how to use it. And so it's, it's useful. Um, and so I hope you enjoyed um, learning how to use it. Um, another tip that I'll give you is that uh, you don't, these don't have to remain a static numerical um, units per se. You can also insert formulas here, okay? Um, so for example, we can go in here and we can say, oh, you know, the top, section should be equal to the bottom section or the here we can say the left section left section is equal to the right section right and you know you can do things like that you can get creative um so yeah go ahead and try it out for yourself see what you can uh come up with hopefully you can use it in in one of your projects um it's a pretty cool tool so if you like the video please subscribe like share comment if you have any questions or if you see that there is a topic that you would like me to cover. Um, and as always, thanks for tuning in and stay blessed.